Hello everybody, welcome, welcome to the channel and oh boy, uh, if you're watching this video on the 20th of July 2024, then I guess you can imagine what topic I'm going to be covering in uh, today's video. <laughs> I was going to talk about something around cloud security, but uh, as you know what has happened these last two days, the one of the biggest IoT outages in like the IT outages in the history has happened. Actually, people are saying it is the biggest global IT outage which has ever happened due to a CrowdStrike update. It has like massively impacted companies, organizations, healthcare across the globe. And it happened because of a faulty update from CrowdStrike. I'm not going to talk about in this video, like uh, what are the technical fixes and the patches because that is an evolving situation. The fixes are already out there. People are working on it. Honestly, I don't think I can add anything else but i do want to talk about the like what are the lessons we can take from this because i do feel sometimes people don't understand that they feel that this issue is disconnected from them and it won't even if they were impacted or were impacted they don't understand that they can take lessons from this issue also right and really it is a very very critical for us to analyze and see what are the things we can take from this incident and make sure that we are not making the same mistakes that CrowdStrike does. You have to understand CrowdStrike, if you're out of, if you're, if you don't work within cybersecurity, you might not have heard about them. But if you are in cybersecurity, CrowdStrike is one of the biggest names within the industry, right? And their shares took a major dump after the, like, like a huge, huge dive after this incident. And, uh, down more than 14 percent and i think it, it it went down more now it's i think they've recovered a little bit but this had a major issue issue on their own reputation it's going to take a long long time for their reputation to get recovered after this like huge screw up that they've done with an update and it has been a vast seriously it has impacted so many people it is very tragic unfortunately people don't understand the real life impact that has happened i, I mean uh, as it professionals we just think about updating the systems and patching it and we don't realize the real life impact which has happened to so many people if you're not aware airlines have been impacted business have been impacted healthcare services have been impacted schools government even emergency services right that's why it's been called the biggest it outage and it, it has had a real life impact people have been stranded people are not able to get medical uh, help People are not able to avail government services, you know, and like with connect with loved ones, London Stock Exchange had a major issue. I mean, across the board, it has been a huge, huge issue. And that is why I wanted to focus about today. Like, what are the key lessons to learn from this outage, right? And I want you to think about this critically also. What are the things we can learn? And before we move ahead, guys, please do like and subscribe to this channel and share this video if you found this useful. So let's go back. Now, CrowdStrike, we, I, I think almost everybody knows what has happened. Uh, they launched an update which caused like most Windows screens to uh, Windows machines to have that blue screen of death, right? And it has impacted companies across the globe. Thousands and thousands of companies across the globe have been impacted. It has been called the biggest IT outage. So the first lesson, guys, please, it's uh, please learn instead of blaming. Now, I'm guilty of this also. I was telling, oh, CrowdStrike is so stupid. How could they have possibly have done this without realizing that it is our company who could be in the headlines tomorrow? I mean, I'm guilty of this, right? Uh, posting memes, laughing at CrowdStrike. How could they be so stupid? It is very, very important. It's easy to, you know, point the finger and say how CrowdStrike is so dumb and all that. But they don't understand. Like, we can post memes and all that. We can have a laugh, right? Across the board on Twitter, LinkedIn. You see this. But... Guys, please understand this can happen to anyone. CrowdStrike is one of the most security mature companies across the globe. And this happened to them. Do not think that your company is immune also. And do not think that this cannot happen to your company. So please, instead of just blaming CrowdStrike and laughing at them and telling them, please take the lessons. That's I, I felt this was a very critical issue to address right from the start. And my I myself am guilty of this. I'll be the first to admit this. That I was also just bad mouthing CrowdStrike without realizing that this simple issue can happen to anyone. The, the the impact of CrowdStrike is because they are trusted by so many companies, which is I'll I'll and I'll get to that point. So what is lesson two? The first lesson we've talked about, don't just blame. Lesson two, very, very important. Uh, this was not a direct cyber attack. So this is not a hacker, a cyber criminal, people taking advantage. This was just simple like error, you know, mistake. And this is even as of today. I checked it. 
this is still their official statement from the CrowdStrike blog. You can go and check it that this issue is not the result of or related to a cyber attack. Now, and this is where I disagree with uh, CrowdStrike. I know th th I agree with them. This is not a cyber attack, but it does have major, major implications on cybersecurity. Why? Because this is a global outage, right? The economic impact is going to be massive. And the IT systems of some of the world's biggest like uh, and most critical companies, they are dependent on CrowdStrike for their security. And CrowdStrike has come to be now it's been identified as a single point of failure. And if you know about cybersecurity, you know, right? Availability. Availability is one of the major tenants of cybersecurity. So we cannot just say, oh, this is not a cybersecurity incident. This was an IT issue. No, guys, please do not make this mistake. Imagine now if a hacker now sees the impact that can come by compromising an agent, which is used across the board. While they were already doing it, CrowdStrike has just shown that the global impact of such issues and the massive damage they can do. So do not treat this as a non cybersecurity incident, no matter what CrowdStrike says. The lesson three is threat modeling this scenario. Now you might be thinking, why am I, sh why should I threat model this scenario? It has nothing to do with me. That would be a major, major issue, right? Like a major mistake to make that you have to understand that if you're, if you're in the IT services business and you're releasing patches to companies, uh, are you making sure what if this happens to you? If you are dependent on agents, if one of your agent malfunctions, what can you do? Are you using the cloud maybe? for like recovery, maybe if you are dependent on the cloud, you can just quickly recover, even though a lot of cloud companies were also impacted and they still had to manually go and fix this. But think about what you can do in this scenario where such a major issue happens and your Windows systems are having that blue screen of death and you have to manually go and fix everything, right? What are the things you can do? Maybe you can rely on virtual desktops, maybe rely on something which is like platform as a service, which does not require any underlying uh, you know, operating system to function, brainstorm the brainstorm these sort of scenarios, what you can do in the future. A lot of companies are going to be revamping their IT budgets to prepare for such an eventuality. You would want to risk assess and threat model the same thing. So, and remember, uh, one thing I really wanted to mention, uh, another lesson, and that is from your incident response, the message from the CEO, that was criticized heavily. The way he just, uh, he, it seemed as if he was not aware of the human impact of this incident. He just said, yeah, this is a major issue. We are working on it. Uh, like, uh, it's not a cybersecurity issue. We are working on it. Like, no apology, no like human emotion <laughs> behind the incident. It was, he was very, very heavily criticized for sounding like a robot, right? And then after that, he did come out and apologize and he did do some damage control. So this is another thing to think about when you're talking about your threat modeling processes, do do think about how you respond to such an incident. Don't sound like a robot because this also damaged their reputation within the industry, the way they were responding to it and they had to do some damage control. So think about what if this happens within your company? What are the things you can do? How you can, uh, how can you can recover if all your window systems are impacted, if you're not able to use them? Can you move to a cloud-based solution? Can you move to a VDI? Some, can, do you maybe need other endpoints? like other security, maybe you can get the budget now for having two sort of EDRs. So maybe disable CrowdStrike, you move to somebody else. If, if, or if it happens to that other EDR, move to CrowdStrike, you know, think about all the scenarios which are coming out and threat model them. Don't just uh, brush this by and say, oh, this has nothing to do with me. Uh, my company was using MacBooks. We were not impacted. My company was not using CrowdStrike. We were not impacted. That is a very, very foolish thing to do, like a foolish attitude to adopt. Please. Make sure that your company is also thinking about these incidents. Lesson four is check your patch management. Now, this is something I was really ticked off at CrowdStrike because, you know, it's like a golden rule. Don't do patching on like Thursdays or Fridays when the weekend is coming out. And I understand the quality processes fail. But, you know, think about this. Do you do a bulk update? Do you update everything or do you do like a canary, like a rollout, like a canary rollout, right? Where you do slowly, slowly. And if issues happen, you can quickly roll it back because the, the issue here is, even if you talk about the fix, the fix is such a nightmare because you have to manually do it. People have automated it now, but it's such a uh, imp like a manual way, a cumbersome way of doing about it. It's like killing your IT support, right? Uh, if you talk to your IT support who have been impacted by this, they know it's just how unscalable it is. It is becoming a nightmare to go back and recover systems and it's taking up so much time, right? Even though my CrowdStripe and Microsoft came up with a fix very, very quickly, they, you know, they had that safe boot 
that allows you to start a Windows computer in a way that does not load load the Falcon sensor. And this allowed the IT guys to fix it. But uh, before that, manually fixing thousands of computers, that is a nightmare, right? Even if you are using things on the cloud, like uh, you cannot put that into safe mode. You have to like move that to, a, you have to detach the storage and fix it there. So, and the problem is many of the companies that are using CrowdSight, they're very security conscious, right? So the servers are encrypted. So you have to actually, to put those servers into safe mode, you have to release the encryption, the recovery keys, and those recovery keys are stored on servers which are um, like also impacted. So it's just such a nightmare here. So you have to think about your own patch management processes. Like what happens if a um, patch goes out? Do you roll it out slowly? Do you like, a, a, what do you call Or do you do the, like a bulk update of everything? And what happens if that patch has a compatibility issue and crashes those systems? So do not make the mistakes which CrowdStrike does. Like, uh, and this is the major issue, right? They are the company who's supposed to be the most mature when it comes to patching and not just rolling out updates across the board. And I'm sure uh, CrowdStrike is going to be releasing more and more like information about what happened, what was the root cause. But these, these are just the things which we know about as of today. And lesson five, lastly, please, guys, do assess your cyber uh, software supply chain. This is something I keep stressing about more and more. Any software today is not made 100% from scratch, right? All of us use dependencies and libraries and we try to move to cloud to like isn't that burden but that that only moves your dependency to the cloud provider also just remember anything can fail and you have to think about and the software supply chain i really like this tweet because because the CrowdStrike had that trust from customers right so uh, they did not need to social they did not have to behave like cyber criminals they did not because they were already trusted by the customers. So they did not have to do any social engineering. And they that's why this massive issue happened because that update was rolled out to hundreds and thousands of Windows workstations and servers. Even they were saying that even a cyber criminal could not have done this sort of thing. And that shows you just how dangerous the software supply chain is if you do not mitigate the risks that are there. Just the impact, which I'm stressing again, that airplanes, businesses, hospitals, emergency services, can you imagine and just one agent causing this amount of issue that just goes to show you just how critical the software supply chain is in today's world right and are you aware do you know what sort of components are present within your software what are the third party libraries what happens are you aware of what are the key risks there are you using something like software composition analysis what if one of the components is compromised one of the components act we had that solar winds compromise quite a while back and i always feel people forget about these things and so please keep this in mind and this way you will be able to like at least have some measure of readiness if these issues happen i have a class on udemy on the software supply chain sorry i'm not trying to like publicize my class but i just thought i'll because i have covered this issue because i always stress this and what i don't like is what happens is people get uh, take these things critically important when these incidents happen and they forget about it i'm going to be updating this class with this crowd strike incident once we have more issues but just keep these things in mind please so i hope this was useful to you i hope you got some lessons if if we get more information i'm going to be try and like update this like uh, make a follow-up video on this but I, this is just from the lessons that i have learned please guys don't just treat this an it issue don't get treated as an outage which is now finished and now you can move back to bau please risk assess this model don't just laugh at crowd strike remember this can happen to anyone think about your patch management Think about what are your backups if this issue happens to you. What can you do if all your Windows systems are impacted? Can you move to the cloud? Are you able to recover? Like, are you able to even bring those pieces into safe mode? All the actions that could have been done, just think about it and then update your own cybersecurity incident responses. And I don't care what CrowdStrike says, this was a cybersecurity incident because it had a massive, massive availability issue. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for listening to me. And I'll see you in the next video. Do like and subscribe to this channel and I'll see you. Bye.